you doing, folks? Welcome to the Dash of Elan. Got another video for you. Another combat example in my new series. Again, this one's on Rommel. We're going to run through a little combat showing some elite German units counterattacking against an armored American thrust in the center of the battlefield. Uh, it's going to be three companies on three companies. Should be interesting, and I hope it helps you guys understand how the Rommel system works. Let's take a look at the forces involved here. So let's take a close-up of the action that's about to begin in this example. we got the Germans. They've got a Panther Tank Company and two Elite Panzer Grenadier Companies moving in and counterattacking these American armored units, basically M4 Sherman, supported by a Stuart. Uh, they're going to try and take that position and uh, hopefully eliminate the Americans. We'll see how they get along with that. But let's get into the example. Okay, folks, we're going to look at a combat. This is a pretty important combat. We're at the first combat phase or tactical phase it's called uh, for the Germans in turn four and this is the situation uh, basically the Germans are counterattacking uh, in this location as well as over here with their assault guns we're gonna focus on this combat right here because this is vitally important uh, if they could turn this around and cause some major damage to the Americans, it's really going to cause some grief. Now, at the moment, when the Americans start their turn, all these tanks will be isolated. Uh, simply because these assault guns, uh, they came from this position here, swept in and attacked in this direction against this M10, or M18 actually, sorry, to attack it. But if, even if they retreat, they can end their retreat in this square. They're going to occupy this. And by occupying this, as well as this objective area, uh, they're basically cutting off the line of supply of all these tanks. So it's not a good situation for the Americans. Now, the Germans see this. They seize the opportunity, attack with two companies of Panzer Grenadiers, supported by a Panther tank company. And they're attacking in this square. Uh, however, this attack will be supported by Nebelwerfers, which are in the back, not too far away. You can see them right there. They're three squares away from the combat. They can be called in. Uh, they're part of the parent organization for the Germans. So any of these units that are in the combat can call him to support the attack. And that's what's going on here. And we're going to roll the dice and show you the odds and give you a quick rundown of how it works. Now, the first thing you do, and looking at this, uh, each side has to total its combat values, basically. And I'm going to use dice for that. For the Germans, I'm going to put down their combat values at their elite Panzer Grenadiers. They each have five uh, value, and the Panther tank has a four. So that's their total so far. Going against the Americans, the Shermans, undamaged, each have a four combat value. There's two of them. There's also some Stuarts which currently, with one hit, only have three uh, combat values. So this is the totals so far. Now, starting with the active player, he declares if he's going to use any artillery. He does. The Americans don't have any supporting artillery currently untipped uh, to put into this combat. So Germans are going to put in the barrage value of their Nebelwerfers, which is a five, three squares away. So these are the combat values of both sides involved in this combat. No other uh, units are involved. There's no flank attacks and so on and so forth. It's open ground. There will be no tank shock because the Germans, although they have infantry going against tanks, they are supported by tanks as well. So they won't suffer that penalty. The next thing to do is to look at tactics. Now one thing I should point out is that the Americans do have a recon uh, vehicle which is the Stuart light tank. Uh, he could, as the defender, before tactics are chosen and revealed and before artillery barrages are declared to support in this battle, he has the option to use the withdraw. And basically that would allow him on a 4 plus to move out of that square and uh, avoid combat. Unfortunately, there's no room for him anywhere. The Germans are in this square and basically all over the place, but he could withdraw up here. He would then be isolated in the start of his turn. In this case, he's not going to use that uh, ability. He's going to stay in that square, fight the combat. The Americans need every gun they can muster in this combat. Now, when it comes to tactics, the Americans with only two OPs are not going to choose any tactics, unfortunately, as important as this combat is. Uh, and the Germans will. So let's see what they take. 
Right, like I said, the Americans won't be taking any tactics. The Germans will. Uh, first up, they're going to take Armored Assault. That'll give them a column shift up as long as they have an armor unit and an armored infantry unit involved in the combat. The Germans do. Their Panther tanks and their elite Panzer Grenadiers qualify for that. They're also going to take Massed Target. As long as I have an artillery unit committing some barrage to the combat, I could take this tactic, and that will double the barrage strength. And in this case, the Nebelwerfers 3 will be double the six. So we're going to bump up our casualties on the Americans here with these tactics. All right, with our tactics chosen, first thing we want to do is double this barrage value. It's going to be quite potent. So we got quite a high value there for the Germans. This is not looking good for the Americans. So with these values totaled, we'll set them aside for a moment and we're going to roll our dice for combat. Each side will roll a d6 and higher the better. So it's six for the Americans and four for the Germans. Pretty average for the Germans, but the Americans are fighting back. Now one of the things we have to do, I know I've rolled these dice already, but at the start we have to decide which two tanks will be basically fighting a duel so we can determine which side is superior. The superior side, if he causes any hits on the enemy, causes an additional hit on that other tank. Both sides picks one of their tanks to be in this challenge, you could call it. I kind of like to see it as a duel. So if we look at the armor ratings, which is what you do, you compare them. Uh, the Sherman tank has a three, and the Panther tank has an armor rating of four. His is better, which means this tank, if any of the Americans take hits in this combat, he gets a hit in addition to that. So, and it's always applied first. It goes right on him. So let's set them aside like that. Now there's our dice rolls, six and four. Now let's resolve the Germans first. They're always resolved first because they are the attacker in this case. Attackers resolve first. So we're going to look at our combat chart. Roll a four. So that tells us what column on the grid to use. And then we're going to go up all those yellow numbers there until we find the value we scored. Now I believe we have 24 here. Uh, yes, 24, 5, 10, 15, 20, 24 they scored uh, with the barrage. So on the four column, go up to 24. You cannot exceed the number, which the highest is 26. We can't exceed it, so we're on the 21. Now count all those yellow boxes, and that's the number of hits we score. So there's four of them there. Now we got to look at our summary of combat shifts as well, which, which will move it up and down. Uh, because of modifiers, none of which apply, like tank shock, attacking infantry, and uh, urban, and so on and so forth. None of those apply. However, the tactics for the Germans is they do get a shift up, in this case, if you remember. So the 21 jumps up to 26. That makes five hits on the Americans. So let's take this dice they rolled, turn it to five, as a little memory thing, and put it right there to remind us. Now we got to apply these. First of all, there's an additional hit right off the get-go that has to be applied to this American tank. The Germans scored hits, and these guys were in a superiority duel, basically. Uh, the Panther is more superior, and that causes a bonus hit on this tank he is facing. Uh, so there's one hit. Now we have to distribute the remaining five. Now the first one, has to go on this tank because he has no hits. All right, so the remaining four hits have to be applied to the other tanks equally as possible. So we'll give him one. We'll give each one of them one, in fact. I'm just going to put these here. Normally, I'd just put a, another, just flip the die. Those will be two. There's two more to go here. And this is basically going to destroy some tanks, folks. So... We're going to take out the Stuart, and we're going to take out this tank as well. So this tank and this tank, the Stuart, were destroyed in the combat. Okay, so that's two units destroyed, and he still has the other one. However, the combat value remains because they're not actually, the Germans are not actually shooting first. Now they rolled a six. Now they got a score of 11. If we go back to our combat grid, we see the six column. It's the furthest to the right. And we look up our total, which is 11. That takes us to just under 14. So we're at 8, 4, and 1, 3 hits. So 3 hits were scored. There's no modifiers that apply, of course, to cause any shifts. So we're going to apply 3 hits. 
to the Germans. And the Germans have to apply those. Uh, he's going to put one on each, and that would do it. So he's going to put one on the Panzer Grenadier there, one on the Panzer Grenadiers here, and one on the Panther tank. All around pretty even, not bad. So there, folks, there's a quick vital combat. However, the Americans do have to withdraw. These tanks are destroyed. I'll mark them like this. I like to keep them on the table. But uh, this tank must retreat, and he can't retreat here. He can't retreat here, and he can't retreat here. So he's going to end up falling back into a position of isolation, uh, which could basically be anywhere. We're going to put him, let's see. Oh, wrong one. All right, with the combat decided, the Germans have occupied the square because the lone American tank has de uh, decided uh, to retreat, and he's currently in this square. There's no room in the other squares. There's already three in each, and uh, he really doesn't want to go anywhere else. He could have chosen to remain, uh, and it wouldn't be a bad choice. He'd still be there, but he's kind of thinking ahead here, putting himself in a position where he can actually ice or help isolate these forward German units, as you can see to the left. So he's opted to withdraw to this position. He is tipped, by the way, so he can take no actions uh, until the start of his next turn. So that's the combat. It was quite successful for the Germans. So there you go, folks. That's another example of Rommel's combat system. Germans did pretty good in that uh, situation right there. Uh, one of the problems the Americans faced that they did not have enough OPs to put into tactics, and that could have turned the tide, uh, at least to balance it out a little bit, and they probably wouldn't have vacated that square. Uh, but nonetheless, it was very interesting. I hope this was useful to you guys to understand how the Rommel combat system works. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave me some comments, let me know what you think, did I make any mistakes, let me know that too. Till next time folks, hang in there, it's only going to get better.